Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, are you game for a dare? Who, me? Sure I am. What's up? Well, then, tomorrow morning, try a breakfast of Quaker Puff rice or Quaker Puff wheat topped with milk and fruit. Boy, I just dare you to say it doesn't hit the spot. These ready-to-serve king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns. Yes, Quaker Puff rice and Quaker Puff wheat are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That's why they're so crisp, tender, delicious. Tomorrow, just you try this breakfast treat. Quaker Puff rice or Quaker Puff wheat. It was summer in the Yukon. Old Hank Miller, owner of the Selkirk Mining Company, sat in the living room of his home outside of Selkirk, with his foot propped up on a footstool. He was talking to Dave Small, cafe owner and part-time lawyer in Selkirk. I asked you to come here, Dave, because I got a legal job for you to do. A legal job? Hmm? Yeah. I want you to fix up a will for me. A will? Why? (laughs) Just because you got rheumatism in your leg don't mean you're going to pass on, Hank. <laughs> oh, I don't aim to pass on yet, Dave. Just want to get this will business settled before my son gets here. Your son, you say? That's right. Well, oh, I didn't know you had a son or any other relatives for that matter, <laughs> Hank. Surprised, eh? So will a lot of others be. Where is this son you speak of? Well, he's been back east in the States. Fact is, I haven't laid eyes on him since he was a baby. Well, what do you know? How'd that happen? Well, let's see now. It was almost 22 years ago that I said goodbye to my wife and newborn son. Went west to make my way. Mamie died and the boy was raised by her ma. I expect he's quite a man now, Dave. Have you kept in touch with him, Hank? Well, now off and on, George and I have been writing back and forth. Of course, most of the letters came from Mamie's ma, the... Boy's grandmother, you know. Oh, I see. Seems like the grandmother died not so long ago. George wrote me about it. Then it came yesterday. Here, it's right on the table. Read it if you like, Dave. Mm Mm-hmm. Now that Grandma's gone, I have no one but you, Dad. Wanted to join you long ago, but couldn't leave her alone. You see, the old lady was ailing and couldn't tell. Mm Mm-hmm, I see. Uh, Read the rest of it, Dave. That's the best part. I'm coming out now to be with you and to help you run the mining company. Yeah. Found out I can get a boat from Seattle that'll arrive there the middle of July. Well, say, Hank, the boat he means must be the one that gets in day after tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I figured. I guess this bum leg will keep me from meeting him at the boat landing. I'll have to send one of the men into Selkirk to bring George out here. I suppose he sent you a tintype of himself so you know what he looks like. No, he didn't, Dave. No, I never got around to sending him a picture either. You know how it is. Yes, yes. Well, uh, say, since I'm right there in town, why not let me meet your son? How are you going to know him? Oh, I can go aboard, find out from the captain. Oh, there's no use going to all that trouble, Dave. One of my... Why, that's no trouble at all. Have to come out anyway to bring your regular forms for the will you want made. That's so. Well, it's mighty nice of you. It'll save one of the men the trip. All right, it's all settled, then. I'll be getting back to town now. I'll be looking for you and my son day after tomorrow. Then. We'll come on out here right from the boat. So long, Hank. Bye, Dave, and thanks a lot. The following afternoon, Dave Small looked up as one of his men at the cafe entered his office. Well, Jake, what's on your mind? 
There's a young fella just come into the cafe asking for a job, boss. A, a card shark. Just come over the trail from Whitehorse. I don't think we need anyone else, Jake. He's a good-looking fella. Be good to have around the gaming room, seems to me, no, boss. I've got... Wait a minute. Maybe I could use him at that. Have him come in here. All right. Hey, fella, come in here a minute. Boss willing to take me on? He wants to talk to you. Come on. I hear you want to work for me. That's right. I'm sort of handy with cards. Thought you might have a place here. Have any friends here? No, I just got in. Worked my way up on a scow that came from Whitehorse. Going on through to Dawson. I see. Then there's no one in town who knows you. Hmm? No. My name is Joe Weeks. How old I'd... are you? 22. I worked my way west three years ago from Chicago, then came up here. I thought you were from somewhere in the east. <laughs> Look, Weeks, I have a plan in mind that could bring you a nice little pile. If you're willing to play along. Sure. Why not? What's the deal? Now, first of all, if you accept my proposition, you'll have to change your name. Change my name? Mm -hmm, that's right. Instead of Joe Weeks, you'll be known as George Miller... Son of Hank Miller, owner of the South Kirk Mining Company. One of the wealthiest men around here. The next day, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police stood with his great dog, King, on the boat landing at Selkirk, watching as the passengers disembarked from the boat. Suddenly, Sergeant Preston spoke to King. Where's well, Corporal Harding now, King? Hello, Corporal. We're over here. Hi there, Sergeant. Well, hello there, King. It's good to see both of you again. How was the trip from Dawson City? Fine. Had good company, too. Young Easterner from the States is coming here to join his father. Oh? Uh -huh. They'll be meeting for the first time in 20 years, he told me. Father left the East when the chap was a baby. Maybe you know the father. Hank Miller. Lives outside of town. Hank Miller? Oh, yes, I've heard of him. He's the head of the Selkirk Mining Company. Looks like... Father couldn't come in to meet you, George, so I'll take you out. Oh, that's nice of you. Sorry that Dad let up with rheumatism, like you said. Oh, it's there he goes now. That's young Miller. I see. I didn't get a look at the man with him. Probably one of his father's men. Well, come on to my cabin, Corporal. We'll discuss our business there. Come along, King. A short time later, in Dave Small's office, George Miller finished talking about himself. And I guess that's about all there is to tell about my life in the East, Mr. Small. I hope you don't think I'm being too inquisitive in asking about you this way, George. Being one of your father's friends, I'm greatly interested. <laughs> Not at all. Well, I guess everything's under control here. Had to stop by to pick up some papers your father wanted me to bring out. Come on, I have a couple of horses waiting out there. Uh, sure, anxious to get out of there. See, Dad. I know just how you feel. There isn't much of a ride. We'll be there before you know it. Let's go. Hmm? Sergeant Preston's cabin in Selkirk was on the edge of town along the trail that led to the Selkirk Mining Company mine and the home of Hank Miller. It was King who called attention to the fact that someone was riding along the trail. What's matter, King? to the door. Yes, someone's riding along the trail outside. Oh, there's two riders on the trail. I can see them from this window. Oh, yeah. That's the same fellow who got off the boat, young Miller. The other one's a cafe owner. I recognize him now. A chap with the name of Dave Small. Guess he's taking Miller out to his father's place. I like George Miller. Nice, clean-cut chap. He asked me to stop by and meet his father before I left Selkirk. Well, that'll be easy, Corporal. The trail to Beaver Dam that you'll be taking tonight goes right past the Miller place. Why not stop in then? Good idea. I'll do it. When I come back, I'll have him meet you too, Sergeant, since he's going to stay here permanently. Well, uh, <laughs> shall we start getting my grub together for the trip, Sergeant? That's a good idea. You'll be back here in five days, so you won't have too much to carry. Come on, I'll help you get it packed. Meantime, George Miller and Dave Small rode some distance up the trail toward the Miller place. Gonna have to get used to calling this country my home, Mr. Small. Gonna be strange calling someone dad, too. You'll soon get used to it. I would... Say, two riders coming along that fork to the left, riding yeah. pretty fast, too. Say, they have handkerchiefs covering part of their faces. Maybe they're going to... We better stop. Hold there. Hold. 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 
Now, what's the meaning of this? Never mind the questions, mister. We got you covered. You don't want to get a slug of lead to us, we say. This is a holdup. We don't have anything worth taking. I don't see why you... Shut up, you. I'll see here. This is an outrage. You got nothing to worry about, mister. I'm taking this other fellow with me. Oh, I won't go anywhere with you. Careful, George. They have guns. Sure, and we'll use them, too. Weeks, you ride up the trail with that older fellow. Young guy's going to ride back along the branch trail with me. Right. What's this all about? Never mind. Now, get going, you two. All right. Come on, mister. And don't forget I've got this gun held on you. I guess there's nothing else to do right now. Get up there. Get up. All right, fella. Now, you and I are riding on that branch trail. Get going if you know what's good for you. Get up. Get up. Get up there. Well, weeks we put that over. <laughs> There's the Miller place just ahead. Sure looks like a prosperous man lives in that place. Hank Miller's wealthy, like I told you. Now make sure you get everything straight before we get there. I think I got everything straight. I even memorized that note you stole from the old man. Good, good. Remember the facts I found out from young Miller about himself. Old Hank Miller's no fool. <laughs> Beginning to feel that I am George Miller. Uh, how long do I have to keep up the axe for him? Once that will is signed, I have a feeling the old man will meet with an accident of some kind. <laughs> Jake will take care of the real George Miller. Then what? Then you, as heir to the Miller Holdings, will sell out to me at my price. And leave the territory with a nice, tidy sum for your trouble. I didn't figure on tying in with any killing. Well, you're in too deep to back out, Weeks, and don't go getting cold feet. All you have to do is play the part well. If you don't, well, there might be another killing you didn't figure on. Now we go in so you can meet your long-lost father. Get up there. Get up. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Boy, wouldn't it be something if any time you like, you could make a wish and have it come true quick as a flash? I can do it. You? Hey, where'd you come from? I can make anything you want come true. Right now, too. Who are you? You look like you just stepped out of a storybook. What with your turban and pointed shoes. My name is Aladdin. Aladdin? Oh. And I suppose that's your magic lamp you're carrying. That's right. Uh Uh-huh. Now tell me you're going to rub that lamp a few licks and the genie will come and bring me anything I want. Try it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Okay. I'd like your genie of the lamp to produce a table set up with the keenest tasting breakfast there is. Man alive! What? That's terrific, Aladdin. Look at that. A table's appeared from nowhere. On it are two bowls. One brim full of Quaker puff wheat, the other of Quaker puff rice. One is for you, and one is for me. Take your choice. Boy, there's milk and sugar on them, and sliced bananas, too. Oh, but look. How'd your genie of the lamp know that wheat or rice shot from guns makes the tastiest breakfast ever? He's the smartest genie in the whole world. I'll say he is. And say, Aladdin, pardon me a moment. I'd like to pass on a tip to all the fellas and girls listening. If you're wishing for a breakfast that's got them all beat for tasting swell, tomorrow morning, eat Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. These giant king-sized grains are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Yes, they're exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Wheat or rice shot from guns is nourishing, too furnishes extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Ask Mom right now to order these famous big red and blue Quaker packages. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only, Quaker puff rice and Quaker puff wheat. Now to continue our story. 
About an hour after the corporal left Sergeant Preston's cabin to go to Beaver Dam with the intention of stopping to see George Miller, Preston was surprised to hear hoofbeats stopping outside. Well, sounds like the corporal coming back, King. Hi, Sergeant. Corporal, what brings you back? Forget something? No, I didn't. There's something I don't understand. I want you to know about it. What's that? Well, I dropped by to see young Miller. A young fellow opened the door. I asked for George Miller. Go on. He said he was George Miller, that he'd arrived that day. That's strange. Yes. I didn't know what to say, so I excused myself and left. Maybe the fellow you met on the boat wasn't George Miller after all. It's possible. But we saw that cafe on him, meet him at the boat, and call him George. And That's right. And then they rode past here this afternoon together... I'm wondering what happened to the other chap, the one I met. Maybe we can find out. How? With King. He can follow the tracks they made when they passed here this afternoon. Say, that's an idea. I'm sure curious about all this. So am I. I'll get my hat. <laughs> yes, King, you can come along. All right, let's go, Corporal. My horse is still saddled. There are the tracks they made. I'll tighten this cinch. Easy, fella, easy now. Hey, King! Follow them, King. Find them, boy. King has a scent. Steady, fellow. Let's go, Corporal. Get up there! Yep, yep. Oh, hold on. Whoa, steady, boy. He's running around in circles. Yes. Two men stopped here, see? They were joined by two others who came along the branch trail, and they rode on. Why doesn't King follow along the trail if they both rode on? I don't know. I... Oh, I'm getting to see why King's confused. Why? The two men who passed my cabin must have separated. Notice how King runs up the trail a bit and then doubles back to the branch trail? Say, that could be it. I think we'll follow the track and go along the branch trail and see where they lead. Go that way, fella. That way. Get up there. Yep, yep. Sergeant Preston and the corporal followed King for some distance along the narrow branch trail. Finally, as they rounded a bend, Sergeant Preston pulled up and called out to King. Oh, there. King, quiet, fellow. Why have we stopped here? Look over there to the left. An old cabin, well off the trail. Yes. I'll ride over there and see who's inside. Get up. Come on now. Look. Someone's opened the door, Sergeant. Yes, and he has a rifle. I'll talk to him from here. Oh, there. Hold on. Who's in that cabin with you, mister? Nobody. I live here alone. I get going. I can see the tip of two horses' heads at the back of the cabin, Sergeant. I know. He's lying. But he won't hesitate to use that rifle, I'm sure. You've got no right coming here like I said. Even if you are, Marty, I use this rifle if I have to. Maybe if we separated, one going to the no, left. No, I got one of us before we got close enough to use our revolvers. King. <laughs> King, fella. <laughs> Go get him, boy. I'm getting impatient. He sees King. The scrub's high enough to give King cover. Watch him. As the two Maoris sat facing the threatening rifle in the hands of Jake, King, seeming to know what was expected of him, crouched low. And then, hidden by the scrub growth, crept silently off to one side, gradually circling around until he appeared at the side of the cabin out of Jake's sight. Sergeant Preston watched as King moved slowly forward. Watch King, Corporal. Be ready. As Jake moved away from the cabin a bit and took aim at the two Mounties, the great dog King, moving like a streak of lightning, moved around the edge of the cabin and leaped. Get him up! Take him up! Get him up! Hurry up! Oh, hold on! Come, King! Come! Steady, fellow! That's John! He sneaked up on me! Keep him away! Watch him, King! Get his rifle, Corporal! Sure! Someone on that bunk over there. Just a minute, and I'll loosen that gag. There. Now to cut these cords on your ankles and wrists. That uniform. You must be a Mounty. I've heard of them in the States. Met one, too. There you are. Who are you? My name's George Miller. Mr. Small and I were held up on the trail. I was brought here. The other bandit went with Mr. Small. I see. Corporal! He's watching that fellow outside. Oh, Corporal! Gosh, I'm sure glad to see you. Sergeant, this is a man I met on the boat, George Miller. He told me. But you say there's already a George Miller at the Miller place, what? Corporal. There can't be. I was to arrive home today. Mr. Small was taking me out to meet my father for the first time. Corporal told me about that. 
What do the other holdup men look like, do you know? Yeah, about my age. Black hair, sort of wavy. Didn't wear a hat. Had dark eyes, too. Couldn't tell much more. He wore a handkerchief over his mouth. That fits the description of the one who answered the door at the Miller place and said he was George Miller. Oh. That's not true. I'm George Miller. We I... believe you, George, and I begin to see the whole thing. It wasn't any ordinary holdup a while ago. I have reason to believe your father's going to have trouble, too. We'll have to work fast. We're going to help you and him. Corporal, take that man outside back to town, will you? Yes, Sergeant. King and I will go with George to his father's place and straighten this thing out. Let's get going. Meantime, back at the Miller place, Weeks, with Dave Small's help, had been getting acquainted with his so-called father. Ah, your father certainly gave us a fine dinner, George. Yes, he certainly did, Mr. Small. I enjoyed it a lot, Father. Well, I had a cooked-up special for you, son. Say, I've been thinking about that fellow that came to the door before supper. You say he wore a police uniform? Uh, yes, he, uh, he was one of those Mounties you have up here. I can't understand why he asked if I lived here. That's just what I've been wondering. Oh, ho, ho, that. Well, <laughs> I told the Mounties in town to be on the lookout in case I missed George at the boat. <laughs> They're mighty efficient, I can tell you. Oh, I guess that was it. He was checking up. Mighty nice of him to come way out here. You should ask him in to supper, George. Well, I, I didn't think of it. He sort of took me by surprise. Yes, I can understand that. Ah, you're fortunate to have such a nice young fellow for a son, Hank. Yes, I guess I am at that. Oh, uh, did you bring over that paper you were going to fix up for me, Dave? Mm -hmm, I sure did. Got it right here in my pocket. You want to look it over? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess that's what I asked for, all right. But there's one thing I forgot to have put in this will. What's that? I wanted to leave everything to George right enough, oh, but... That's the way I have it drawn up. Sure. But I want to write in a condition to the wills, Dave. A condition? Well, I worked hard and formed that mining company. I wanted to stay in the family. I hope for George to get married and to pass it along to his son when he has one someday... That's why I want you to say in this will that George isn't to sell or trade off any part of the company. While George and I was alone here when you left us to sort of get acquainted before supper, I told him about how much I thought of the company and all. And you mean he won't get the inheritance unless he agrees to that condition? Yes. Mm. I know George won't mind at all, will you, son? Well, uh... <clears throat> now, hey, father, now, I, uh... wait a minute. I bet he put that idea in your head when you had that talk. After making a deal with me, he's planning to double-cross me. Small. This is the first time I've heard about it. Yeah, just a minute, Small. What's that about George making a deal with you? Do you mean to say that uh, he... uh, Don't pay any attention to him, Father. Oh, forget me, huh? Now, you listen to me weeks, I'll let you... Hold on. Maybe you take me for an old fool, but I'm beginning to see things right. You just made a slip, Small, in calling him Weeks. I'm thinking he isn't my boy at all. You're right, he isn't. Go ahead and tell him you're just a cheap gambler, Weeks. Why, you... Now put up that gun, Weeks. Put it up. We can still make this work out if we pull together. Not if you gave away our plan. So I'm right. You were planning to trick me. You had this sneak pose as my son. Shut eh? up. You sign that Will Miller just as it is, right now. It wouldn't do any good now that I know he isn't George. When George does get hit... He he'll... won't, so forget it. Here's a pen. Sign that paper. No. After I signed it, you'd kill me off, I guess. I'm not signing that. I thought that slick, ornery fella couldn't be my boy. I said sign that paper. Oh. Scaring me with a gun, huh? They're going to kill me. At least you won't have that paper signed. Go ahead and shoot. Go ahead like he says, Small. I'm as good at faking signatures as I am at playing cards. I'll sign it myself. We'll find a copy of his signature in that desk over there. A forger, too, huh? Well, you won't get away with it. I'll tear up this... No, paper. you won't give me that! No! If I didn't have this bum leg, Dave Small, I'd lick you for that, old as I am. Shoot him, Small, and tie me up and get out of here. If anyone comes to the mine to investigate the shot, I'll I'll say someone murdered my father. All right, Hank Miller. This is it. No, you don't... No, oh, my wrist! Come here. No. The old man's in front of me, Mounty. Drop your gun or I'll put a bullet in him. As Joe Weeks stood looking at Sergeant Preston, he failed to see the big gray shadow that streaked through the open door and headed his way. With a snarling lunge, King bore Weeks to the floor. Help! Get him away! Get him off! Down, King. Easy, fella. Now, that dog. I still had my gun. I'd kill any old man, too. I heard all I can take from you. Why, you dirty... 
I'll show you. This will show you. Oh, oh, Donna, I had enough. No more. For sure good hitting, young fella. Yes, sir. Well, you both got here just in time. They were aiming to kill me off. I guess they already did away with my my boy, George, who was to come to live with me. Why don't you take a good look at this young fellow, Mr. Miller? Do you mean that he... he's... Hello, Dad. Yes, I... this is George Miller, your son. My... my boy. Say now, you're the image of me when I was your age. And you fight just as good, too. Oh, I suspected that slinky galoot wasn't a Miller. That's why I suggested putting a condition in my will... Just to see what they'd say. Dad, uh, Preston and King, along with another Marty, saved me. (laughs) Oh, it sure is good to have someone calling me Dad. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Sergeant. Thanks a lot to that fine dog of yours, too. (laughs) Yes, sir. He looks pleased as all get out sitting there, seeming to understand everything we're saying. I guess he does, Mr. Miller. We can all say that thanks to King, this case is closed. (laughs) In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Fellas and girls, remember, your grocer now has special new Marl Farm packages of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Yes, the famous breakfast cereals shot from guns now come on eight different exciting new packages. And on a single package, you get as many as six different models of farm buildings and farm animals. These models are yours at no extra cost. There's no waiting. So shake a leg. Get in on the fun. Start building yourself a swell model farm pronto. Remember, you can now get 46 keen detail scale models on packages of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. They're yours at no extra cost. Yes, they're yours for the asking when you ask for Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. Listen Friday... When Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Grizzly Grayson. Grizzly Grayson was a notorious criminal. King and I found him dead on the floor of a canyon. I was due for a big surprise when I brought in Grayson's body. I was met by a constable who told me Grizzly Grayson was in jail and very much alive. This led to one of the most amazing adventures King and I have ever had. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure... Friday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. From Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.